So I've been thinking about how I want to start this series on Seminar 18. And my temptation, as some of you know, is to begin with this wild little radio address called Radio Phony. As you know, Lacan dips from Seminar 17 to go record some writing in audio format that's going to be played on the Belgian radio. There's this passage in particular in this wild little piece that I want to share with you. It's on page 15 of the standard English translation of this essay slash radio address, which you can find readily online. And it reads as follows. You may know this passage. It's a wild passage, and it's tempting to begin our series on 18 with this. The unconscious one sees is only a metaphoric term in designating the knowledge that only sustains itself in presenting itself as impossible, so that from that it is confirmed as being real, to be understood real discourse. Now the part that I really like about this is this bit about presenting itself as impossible. The unconscious is a field of knowledge that doesn't just exist as the impossible, but also finds expression in presentations of itself as impossible. Presenting itself as impossible. Such that in these presentations of itself as impossible, it is confirmed as being real, which makes its presentations, as I read this passage, examples of real discourse. Now you may be wondering, why in the hell, McCormick, would you want to begin the series on 18 with this passage from this wild and wacky radio phoning address? A passage that has been bewildering Lacanians for a long time. Why start there, bro? Well, the reason why I would start there is because I believe in this passage we get a tentative preliminary answer to the question, what the fuck? And that question, what the fuck, is usually the question that I begin all readings of Lacan seminars with. I love where he begins. I also find it tremendously frustrating sometimes. This title of the 1971 seminar that we're going to be looking at, Seminar 18, on a discourse that might not be a semblance. It's an interesting one. Modus ponens, you heard him mention in the opening chapters of this discourse. What exactly is a discourse that might not be a semblance? Well, first and foremost, what we have to know is that if there might be a discourse that's not a semblance, the presumption here the implication, modus ponens, is that most, if not all discourse, that we have encountered to date is a semblance. Master, hysteric, university, analyst, capitalist, the list could and should go on. Sometimes even in spite of what Lacan says. These are discourses that demonstrate that discourse is a semblance. Which brings us to Seminar 18. Could there be a discourse that is not a semblance? And if so, what kind of discourse would this be? How would it operate? What would be its basic structural operators? That's why it's tempting to begin with that passage from Radiophony. A discourse that might not be a semblance, hear me now, would be a real discourse. Not the discourse of the analyst, although it's close. Certainly not the discourse of the master, which is the other side of the discourse of the analyst. Not contrary, correlative. Not an antinomy, but a torsion, like on a Mobius strip of the discourse of the analyst. You see, the master exists on a Mobius strip with the analyst. And the same is true of the university and the hysteric. You also read that right in the opening chapter here on Seminar 18. But the point I want to make here is that there may be 
a discourse of the real in addition to these four classic Lacanian discourses. That is what I'm suggesting here in starting with radiophony. That there may be a discourse that succeeds in presenting the impossible, which for Lacan at this point is in his thought, as you heard us say in our previous series on Seminar 17, it's all over Seminar 17. The impossible for Lacan here means the real. But for us, in the field of discourse formations that Lacan has now entered into, what matters is the presentification, as he sometimes says, of the impossible. It's not the real that interests him here. It's the name of the real. It's not the real father that interests him here. It's the name of the real father, if you recall our stuff on Seminar 17. It's the statement. It's the declaration. It's the signification of the real in the symbolic, using the symbolic that interests him. And this, as we're going to see, is also why he is queuing up truth in the opening chapters of Seminar 18. Now, I don't think that truth is equivalent to the real, but they are closely connected in Lacan's theory of discourse. And part of our challenge in getting started here is to draw out this connection, but also in so doing to mark some of these differences. Truth can also be presented. It also passes through the defiles of the signifier. It also can find expression, but only ever partially. And the partial expression of truth usually only ever says just that. Here I find my limits. Beyond this I can go no further. Here is yet another presentation of the impossible.